Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. In today's Pick a Card reading, we're going to take a look at the victim archetype. Now, why are we taking a look at the victim archetype? Well, that's because I believe this topic fits in nicely with the air element. Some of you know or may have noticed that I'm linking in these Pick a Card readings with the current element series that I'm doing. And last week, we did the air element, so I thought, wouldn't it be good to take a look at the victim archetype? So why the victim archetype with the air element? Well, air is very much about conversation, about what we say to each other, how we say things to each other, and all that kind of thing. And I thought, let's look at the underside. Let's look at when it's not going so well. Let's look at conversations that maybe are difficult, or where people feel victimized, or you know, perhaps where they're not feeling understood, etc. I wanted to take a look at the sun's energy as well. The sun is bright and positive and wonderful, but you know there are also negative qualities to the sun as well. And I started thinking about sun in the seventh house, which is a classic air house where Saturn is exalted, and that's where the sun is debilitated. So I thought, let's take a look at that because you know classic um, relationship problems can come from you know sun in the seventh house, for example, where you know, you, you, say for example your partner finds it difficult to get close to you or sun in the first where people find it hard to get close to you or, or this kind of thing. I just thought this would be interesting energy and I also wanted to see, so instead of taking, picking a positive side of the air element, I thought let's, let's work with some negativity here because I do think things are a bit tough out there in the collective right now. Collective energies aren't brilliant at the moment so I wanted to you know, roll up my sleeves and do some work. And I also want to see, this is also a little bit of a tester just to see that does a more negative topic get more click through. So I am doing a little bit of testing here as well. So I don't often do that, but uh, I am curious to see of the picker cards, you know, what types of topics uh, people prefer to tune into. So at any time that you're ready, feel free to pick between group one, group two, or group three and I'll see you in your reading. Hi there, group number one. So if you chose group number one, you are in the right place. And we're gonna take a look at your cards. Now, as with any of my readings, please make sure you use your intuition as I go. That's really, really important. You should take what resonates and discard what doesn't. All right, so we have got Six of Cups upright. We've got the King of Wands upright. This is a new deck that I got recently. Isn't that beautiful? Look at the gold foiling. Isn't that stunning? So the King is here. <laughs> We have the Page of Pentacles in reverse. And we've got False Ego. Look at that. I believe this is Mohini, who is Lord Vishnu, basically in disguise. And doesn't she look extremely beautiful? <laughs> Which was really the whole point of that story. Oh, these aren't all going to fit. Well, doesn't matter. We'll just deal with it. <laughs> all right, we have this, which I can't pronounce. But it looks like Capricorn and Aquarius symbols there. So we've got Kada Kohot. Fertility and Prosperity. It's a very beautiful card. I'll fix them later. And then we've got the Sun in the 11th house. Now, this is an excellent reading. Like seriously, this is the energy here is absolutely beautiful. So if you clicked on this video thinking that you know I want to explore the victim archetype and you clicked on this reading, well what what can I say? There's not much victim energy here. <laughs> so if you're you know if you're after some good news stick around, but if you were hoping to resolve or <clears throat> find a tool that would help you work through some victim vibration, you might want to look at group two or three in this occasion because there is not a lot of victim energy going on here at all. 
this is a stunning reading, guys. So there's some really nice things happening in your life. Firstly, this to me is a card of nostalgia. And it's a card where you are perhaps reminiscing over old times. This can be a twin flame card. This can be you thinking about someone from your past, um, a past love, for sure. That's definitely indicated by this card. This is the King of Wands. Now, the King of Wands uh, is a very passionate man. And, um, you know, yes, that, that energy is here, which is quite incredible. So if you're a man listening to this, then, well, you know, perhaps you're reminiscing over an old love or somebody that you miss, okay? Uh, if you're a woman listening to this, then the case may be for you that someone from your past, who is this guy, is thinking about you. Okay, so that's beautiful, right? Is something going to happen? I don't know. <laughs> I can't say that. But what I can say is that there's a really gorgeous energy here. Probably for the whole month, I would say, right? We've got the Page of Pentacles here. Now this relates directly to you, whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. I get the sense that you have been busy working. You've been squirreling away the little squirrel here. Um, you've been sort of saving all your nuts or whatever, or your coins, pentacles, money, etc. So that's fantastic. You've been working hard and that's been going well. But this card is indicating to me that you are probably a bit bored, actually. I kind of get the sense that you are like, okay, where's the next challenge in my life? Or, you know, I'm good at this what's next there's a boredom that has set in there's a kind of like a i guess a realization that you've mastered this level where you are at what else is out there okay this could also be touching slightly on perhaps a little bit of victim energy to do with your workplace and i'm kind of getting that from this card here the 11th house can indicate co-workers professional network circle. It can represent older siblings as well. There could be some older siblings um, where things aren't going so great or something to do at work, absolutely. So there's that energy. Also, this placement could be telling me that the person that you are thinking about or that kind of thing could be an old work contact or something along those lines there. So that's quite interesting. We've got False Ego, this beautiful card here. I'm going to read out the back. So it says, Bewildered Spirit Souls, under the influence of the three modes of material nature, think themselves to be the doer of activities which are in actuality carried out by nature. And I do see that this is linking in with this card here. And this here, because there is something going on at work, I do think. Um, perhaps you've mastered where you are, you're a bit bored. You know, maybe, what did I have in my notes? I did write some notes on this. Yeah, not so enthusiastic about your work right now. would love to take time out. Absolutely, this could be indicating that you just might want to break, okay? If things have been a bit samey, I suppose, I want to say. So... But there could be someone at your workplace where that person is wearing a mask, okay? Because this is Lord Vishnu dressed as a beautiful woman, right? So there could be some deception or something along those lines. Uh, but one of the things, when I first looked at this set for you guys, one of the things that really struck me was that the blockage that is happening in your life if you perceive there to be a blockage in it, or if you're bored of this situation here at work or you want what's next or whatever the way to find it is actually you need to go back to nature you need to be more in tune with nature and that's going to be really important there there is something that you see you think yourself to be the doer of activities you know whereas in actuality it's carried out by nature so perhaps the ego is yours right? Perhaps the blockage is that you think you need to do something, whereas in actual fact, what you probably need to do is maybe you need to go and visit this side of your life. You need to, well, you need some love in your life if you don't have love in your life, right? Um, 
that would be a good thing. And the other thing is your creativity, who you are as a creative person. Are you creating? Are you making something? Are you doing something? What lights you up? What gives you passion? What makes you feel fantastic? You know, um, and maybe you need to go after it. Okay, maybe that is the thing that you need to do. But I get the sense that this is really more than anything talking about, rather than deceit and masks and all that kind of thing, I do think it's talking about you need to link into nature and you need to be with nature and you need to, um, and that would possibly make this upright. And then of course bring you the next levels of abundance, right? The next levels of what it is that's coming for you. And that is represented by this card here. So I'm actually going to read this one out because the words in this deck are so good. So I'm just going to read it directly. So it says, Ptolemy said that the nature of this mansion was a combination of Saturn and Jupiter. We've got Saturn and Jupiter together in the sky, right? So it's an amazing time. This is a very timely reading right now. So traditionally, this mansion was considered to be auspicious and a significator of good luck and prosperity. When we nourish our soul with what we truly need, we live in a constant state of abundance. This mansion shows serenity and beneficence. It is strongly linked to nurturing and receiving maternal love. Beautiful. So I mean, this could be that. This could be, maybe you're missing your mum. Maybe you're separated from your mother you know, and you miss her enormously and, and you're thinking about that or she's in another country or, or any of those kind of things, right? I'm very lucky I'm uh, with my mum, so, you know, I, I don't have to miss her. But here it says, um, it is strongly linked to nurturing and receiving maternal love, something that we often seek in our relationships, to be held, to be accepted, to be given what we most need, to feel that someone cares about our needs. This mansion was traditionally considered a good omen for creative endeavors. Beautiful. And we've got the King of Wands here. He's hugely creative. So, you know, the fruition of a new project and for receiving good fortune if we ask for it. So, guys, you've picked a sensational deck here. You've picked like, this, is, this has got the highest vibrations of all three this time. This is just a beautiful gift giving, luck giving, gorgeous placement right here. But if you clicked on this looking for, you know, am I having to deal with how am I handling the victim thing in my life? Don't worry. If you are in a bad situation and things aren't going well, know that all this is on the horizon for you. This is what's wanting to come in. Okay, so if there is any victim energy or anything that's, that's not going right in your world, know that if you sit with it, if you be with it, if you feel the feelings, right? Feeling the feelings is something we're going to have to do, I think, more in December, especially towards the end of December. So, uh, yeah, if you have a look at my December outlook and look up your mini reading there, I've probably talked about it there. I talked about it across the board for all signs. So, group number one, I'm going to leave you with this because it's actually a very good reading. So, you know, and if things aren't right in your world, know that love this beautiful passion and creativity these beautiful energies are wanting to come in with this with your work you've just got to tune in more to nature and you'll be shown the next level that's really the only thing you have to do at this time so group one i hope this has been a good reading for you please let me know in the comments below how you went with this as a tool of reflection right because <laughs> that's all these are and um yeah, I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there, group number two. If you chose group number two, you are in the right place. So let's take a look at your cards. As with any of my readings, remember that you must use your intuition at all times. Check in with your intuition, see which messages are for you. What do you need to discard or what resonates? Look at that, the hanged man in reverse okay so yeah take what resonates and if it doesn't resonate discard it okay so there might be something in here for you but there might not be you might want a different group or a different reading altogether okay we've got the nine of wands in reverse and we've got 
What about the King of Wands? We got that again. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, we do. We had that in the reading before. But it's appearing slightly differently here with this lone, lone wolf type figure here. <coughs> oh, apologies about my little cough there. All right, protection. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure quite what the story is here. I should have asked my mum. She's really good at that. Wait, well, we'll go, we'll go to the back of that um, in a bit. We'll go through all the cards first. So we've got Regulus. Oh, fantastic. And that's quite amazing because we've got a lion here. So that is just perfect, perfect. This deck, I'm telling you, it always ties up a reading so nicely. Sun in the third house. All right. So what do we have happening here? We've got the hanged man in reverse. So this is a standstill. Something in your life where you're at a total standstill. The other thing is that you're totally exhausted. Absolutely. I mean, if you're not burnt out, then I don't know what's going on, right? And if, if you're not, well, hopefully this might be the message that tells you, hello, you're burnt out. <laughs> and you need to rest. Okay, so there's definitely some standstill energy and burnout energy going on here. I would say with this beautiful lone wolf, king of wands type creature here, you are working hard. You're very creative, extremely so. You've been working hard because it's in you, right? And and it's like it's like a lightning bolt. It's like those you know those ideas you get it you have to create. It's like and there is also that thing that if you don't create, sometimes that can cause illness or blockages. And yes, I mean, look at that stillness and exhaustion. Okay, so if you're going through any of that, know that, acknowledge it, see it, feel it, be with it, you know, uh, don't avoid it. Do take some time out or rest as you can. This really is going to be a time where you want to take some time out. Now, I'm just looking at my notes because I do check these before I record. And one of the things I wrote was victim energy. You might be a victim of your own ambition, right? Are you working too hard? Are you trying to do too much? And this is going to be a time where you need protection energies. Protection over what? We've got the third house here. So I'm going to say over your courage actually your courage and confidence to go at your own pace There's something here about pacing timing because of the burnout and the standstill this can all unblock this can definitely unblock but i think it's about slowing down and i think it's about about just being and about protection it is just about bit of time out your confidence might be taking a knock as well at this time let's take a look at what the guidance is here so it says for those who worship me with devotion meditating on my transcendental form i carry what they lack and preserve what they have both materially and spiritually absolutely we can always count on God, you know. We can always say that, look, this is too much for me right now. And I, I'm going to hand over to you, universe, because I, I can't keep working at this pace. It's, it's, it's starting to burn me out a little bit. I've got a note here that you're not working hard for no reason, okay? And you're absolutely not because money is on the table for you. Okay, so all this that you're doing, and you might be thinking that I'm doing so much, but, you know, where are the rewards? Where is the success? Where, you know, when, when is this going to happen for me? You're in a nine energy here. So you can't, you're coming up to the end or the completion of some kind of cycle. You don't have far to go. You just have to protect your sense of confidence. This is a third chakra thing. Protect your third chakra. Protect your courage. Okay, 
there is some protection energy needed. So you might there might be some victim type energy. It could be something. And I get a work sense for this group. I get a sense that there's something going on at work. It could be with siblings. It could be a sibling thing uh, or someone in your friends group, friend circle. Something or someone who might be draining some energy from you. Okay, or who's just being draining, right? Being with them can be a bit of a drag sometimes. So I totally understand, but the one good thing of all of this spread and i'm so glad for this card because this is the money on the table this is like the abundance this is the wealth this is the don't you worry this is going to come good so i'm going to read out what it says here and i mean if we look at this it says strength and fragility teach us how our vulnerability is purely a blessing so let's take a look at what it says in the guidebook it says the fixed star regulus is found in the constellation of leo in the cluster of Corleonis, representing the heart of the lion. Ptolemy said that the nature of this fixed star carries the energy of Mars. This fixed star is located in the eighth mansion of the moon. Okay. It was said that, and by the way, I don't know how this corresponds with um, Vedic. I will have to double check on all that, but let's keep going here. So it says, um, I still love this deck. <laughs> Uh, it's a, it was said that this powerful fixed star offers benevolence and strength, helping against enemies. Regulus reminds us that it is our vulnerability and flaws that make us human. And that due to this, we all share the same essence. Okay, so... Benevolence and strength, helping against enemies. Yeah, you are going through something here. And it could even be it could even be to do with romance as well. We've got the lion here, fifth house could be could be something to do with romance. But I'm getting a bit more of a stronger work vibe, uh, work peers, siblings. Definitely, these are the people that where there could be some tension at this time. But what I feel is that you're not far away. From completing this dynamic it's just a little bit more of a push a little bit more of a stretch to go yes we've got Leo energy here of course with Regulus Leo yeah and then we've got a lion so there's some fifth and third house type activity so fifth yeah romance children children your children might be stressing you out a bit you might be worried about your children at this time and I mean definitely creative projects okay so there is you have been working very hard you are very creative you are doing very well I feel like the angels and guides are wanting to give you that message to say, look, just keep going. It's just a little bit more, okay? It's, it's you know, it seems like a hard grind or a lot of burn, but um, it's just a little bit more and things are really going to come good and that abundance is waiting for you and it wants to come in for you, okay? So it's definitely money. This is like good, big money. This is Leo money, okay? This is, this is the kind you want to spend on like, you know, champagne and going out not that anyone's doing that right now but you know save it for, for when the world gets better and we can do those things so guys that's your reading for today it is a bit of a brief one but i hope this has been good let me know in the comments below uh, if this resonated for you and i look forward to seeing you next time okay if you chose group number three let's take a look at what happening in your cards so we have got now as with any of my readings please do use your intuition as we go along if there's anything here that resonates take it if it doesn't discard it we've got the seven of pentacles upright it's a beautiful card isn't it it's a new deck <laughs> uh, we've got the page of pentacles upright We have got the Three of Wands upside down. It's a very cool image, as in cool colours, not the warm, fiery colours that you typically have with the wands. quite like this deck. It's quite original. Oh, how beautiful. Calm meditation. And we have Atar. Frustration and dispute. Allow your mind to wander. 
hinder yourself from unnecessary answers. Okay, that's a weird phrase there, <laughs> hinder yourself from. Don't worry, I'll read the book because this is a very good deck and uh, we'll get into that. Okay, Sun in the Sixth House, guys. All right, so what do we have here? This is quite an interesting spread. I can see that you have definitely been working hard. Okay, you've been working hard and that has been going well. I really like this spread actually. I've got a good vibe for the people in this group. I think you've been enjoying your work. I think you're finally in work and perhaps it's a new venture. Perhaps this is something you've started that's new or you haven't been doing it for like 10 years or something. Maybe you've been doing it for a couple of years. Maybe it's something quite new that you're doing, but you are working hard and you are earning money from doing something you love. I do get the sense that you're quite happy uh, with what you do. I don't get the sense that you know it's a grind or that it's dull. Or, no, I, I get the sense that you're quite happy with where you are work-wise. What I do get the sense though with this card is that there's frustration energy. The frustration is that you'd rather be further along than where you are. So yes, you're working, but you've got visions for what you want to do in what you're doing. Either you're on a stepping stone at the moment, but you've got a big vision and you're feeling that I'm frustrated. I'm not as far ahead as I would like to be. Okay, and there's, a, there's quite frustration around that. There could be delays and blocks happening and you're kind of judging yourself and you're going, you know, I should be much further along than I am. I've got the note here in regards to the victim thing. Victim. Yeah, this victim thing, I think it could be that you are, there's quite a bit of competition in what it is that you do. And I feel like people are watching you or people are comparing themselves to you or there's something to do with co-workers, there's something to do with people are watching you, people, you know, I don't know if they're jealous of you or what, or, but there's a kind of energy that there's a competitive thing going on with work and there could be, that could be creating a, a bit of victim type energy in them, in that they're kind of, they might be looking at you and they might be thinking, oh, you know, we're not so good or maybe you're checking yourself out in relation to the competition and maybe that's where some of this frustration is coming from where you're kind of going I'm not so far ahead and wow I'm looking I started my thing at the same time as those people but they're so much further ahead you know when you do that whole thing and you go on LinkedIn and you see what people are up to and you're like wow man that guy was like couldn't tie his shoelaces five years ago and now <laughs> you know now he's like the head of blah blah right so yeah, I mean, it's some of this energy is on the table. That's okay, right? That's natural. We all go through this. So if you've been going through a bit of that, know that there's nothing uh, out of the, you know, out of the ordinary with that. That's, that's, that's quite all right. Let's have a read of what this, I'm drawn to this card next, and then we'll have a look at what you need to do. And the remedy really is around meditation. But let's have a read of what's in the guidebook for this. So yeah, I'll just read out my other notes as well. That victim, yes, competition in your career, people are watching you. Protect your courage, your confidence. Maybe taking a bit of a knock. Actually, no, that was from the previous group. Sorry, my notes are a bit, a bit scattered. I've been doing too much work lately. Now, let's have a look at this. So a tariff, I'm gonna read this out. The ninth mansion represents the eyes of the lion, located in the constellation of Leo. Again, we've got Leo just like group two. This is a little bit like group two as well. So yeah, Ptolemy said that the nature of this mansion represents the energy of Saturn and Mars. This mansion traditionally holds a negative significance. It depicts misfortune, especially in travel and health. Okay, the boundaries of Saturn constrain the energy of Mars, which leads to depression, frustration, and disappointment. Frustration we have, we have that in this card, absolutely. I did, yeah, yeah, that's that's for sure. So frustration and disappointment, but our resentment often has its origins in asking too many questions, leaving no room to welcome other possibilities. When we demand answers and these do not come, we suffer in our uncertainty. When we, however, allow things to unfold without the need to anticipate, 
We are freeing our minds from unnecessary hardship. Yeah, I get that. I, I see that. So, I mean, if you are wondering, you know, why am I not further along? Okay, yeah, I'm working hard. I'm not further along. I have a big vision for what I want to do. When am I going to get there? Right? And do you think the universe is saying you need to relax? <laughs> okay. You need to chill out. And yes, there is this stuff with the competition and there is this stuff with you looking, comparing yourself to others, them comparing themselves to you. And there's some not great stuff going on with that. Universe is saying, definitely from this card. And also we've got cancer here, right? So the universe is saying, put it all down. It's time to meditate. It's time to just be still. It's time to... And this is really a good time to do that because the veil is thin at this time, you know. Let's read what we've got here. Oh yeah, this was beautiful. I read this just briefly before starting the camera a couple of hours ago. As a lamp in a windless place, as a lamp in a windless place does not waver, so the yogi whose mind is focused remains always steady in meditation on the transcendent self. How beautiful right? The universe is asking you to be that flame that doesn't flicker, okay? And you can do that. That's not hard, right? You've done it before. You'll do it again. You're probably doing it right now as you take in this reading, which is hopefully a bit chilled in nature <laughs> and gives you a bit of time out from the world out there. But honestly, group three, I think that Things are actually quite good for you. I don't think you have to be too worried about anything. Uh, you know, there's, this is just a time where we should all be slowing down anyway. You know, it's December, Christmas is coming and it's time to relax, it's time to be at home. It's time to take our eyes off the competition. Hopefully they take their eyes off us as well. Uh, and calm meditation. It's time to just change the pace and Unwind, be that still candle, that still flame that doesn't flicker. You can do that. That's not going to be hard. So group three, I hope you've enjoyed that reading. Please let me know in the comments below how this goes for you. I know this is a bit of a simple one, but you know, sometimes we just need words of encouragement from the universe. And I do believe that that is what's coming through for you. There's a lot of encouragement. There's a lot of just keep going, you know type message so hopefully this has been a nice reading let me know in the comments below and i look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.